Hello, before we continue and have a quick look at the undatables, the new undatables on Channel 4 2017, please can you click on the subscribe button that's appearing right now. That's northern for you to subscribe, all right? Uh, click on that. And also, if you've got any comments, you want us to review any shows or anything like that, this is the start of our channel, okay? This is the very beginning of it. You're here at the embryonic state. So please comment, please subscribe, please like. We're here to have a bit of fun, all right? Please subscribe. I'll see you soon. Blah! What we watched on TV. So then, ladies and gentlemen, the undateables. Channel 4 have just banged out another series in 2017. Now, I always kind of thought that The Undateables was one of those sorts of shows that had a bit of a difficult tightrope to walk. I mean, they're coming across serious issues here. Let's face it, disability is not something to laugh at. But in a kind of tongue-in-cheek way, Channel 4 kind of, they sort of bring out the human behind a disability, which I think sometimes people find a bit of a difficulty in finding. And I've got a feeling that they seem to strike a decent balance here. But that doesn't mean we can't watch the programme in the vein of what most people are going to do. Let's face it, it's a serious subject, but also Channel 4 have kind of pitched it in the way that it's kind of entertainment. In this episode, we meet Sam, Kate and Ian. Sam has Asperger's Syndrome, which as far as I know is kind of a form of autism, uh, or on that kind of spectrum. Kate has narcolepsy, uh, which is kind of where you fall asleep all the time, which is a bit what I'm like when my wife starts talking to me about going shopping. And Ian has kind of tunnel vision and to be honest, his story was pretty emotional for me. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's have a little gander at Sam first. Full screen ahead. Oh, go Argos. Go Argos. Go on, go. Are we here? I've got a feeling this car's changing some perceptions. Get Mitsubishi away. Mirror. Go away. Hey, are you a stand? Because I think you're first class. Bloody annoying adverts out of the way. Let's have a look at the show. Hurdles can sometimes get in the way. You always hear girls say, oh, what's your type? Oh, tall. How hench is he? Why has he got a problem? I'm like four and a half foot tall, man. I know he's a, a dwarf, you know, but look at him. He's absolutely ripped. He should be, you should be proud of that, mate. You look absolutely hench. Wish I had a body like that. I want his personal trainer. I struggle with why people give flowers. To me, it's saying, here, have this pretty life so it can die. You are. <laughs> right, okay, fair enough. Each to their own, I guess. You don't drink beer. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you don't drink beer. Oh, the death knell in any relationship is obviously if one of you is a complete pisshead and the other one's teetotal. I mean, for me, he did have a mouth that's slightly the same shape as Kira Knightley's. <laughs> Sam has Asperger's syndrome, uh, which as far as I know, I'm not a doctor, even though I like to self-diagnose on the NHS sometimes. I once stubbed my toe, went on the internet, went on WebMD, and someone said, oh, you've got a brain tumour, mate. Um, Sam's got Asperger's syndrome, and obviously that makes it very difficult for him to communicate with people, but I've always been a believer, and I get a feeling from this show that they kind of agree with the sort of thing they're trying to strike, the balance they're trying to strike. Even if you do have, say, mental difficulties or communication difficulties with people, doesn't mean that should be a barrier to falling in love with them. Let's quickly meet Sam, shall we? I want to find love, not this much, not this much, not even this much, but as long as... We all know where those hands have been. <laughs> sorry, Sam, I'm sorry, mate. No, bigger than the whole universe itself. That's how much I want love. Isn't that how much all of us want love? I know that when I go away on holiday and I come home and the cat's been left on his own, he wants love so much that he's done a shit on the bed. Postman Sam, Postman Sam, Postman Sam and his jar of jam. Ah, oh, he's a rapper, isn't he? Postman Sam, Postman Sam, Postman Sam and his jar of jam. I feel proud and privileged to work for Her Royal Majesty. I feel like I'm part of royalty every time I do this job, but then again, it's called Royal Mail. What else you Expect. Now, I'll tell you what, right, if just 10% of this country enjoyed their job as much as Sam does and does it as hard as he obviously does, we'd be a lot better off. Don't want to start getting on at the country. Don't worry, you're not watching the Daily Mail YouTube channel. Hey, are you a Sam? Because I think you're first class. Mm -hmm. Sam, you've got my number, mate, right now. Just have a look at Sam for a sec. Doesn't he look a little bit like Richard Bacon? They stick your hand out and go, no, sorry, I can't. No! 
What were you doing? I think we finally stumbled on the problem that Sam might have. It's not that he's a rapper. It's not that he's got Asperger's syndrome. I mean, when has that ever been uh, stopped to falling in love? Definitely the fact that he can bend his arm like that. That is freaky, man. Just look at it. Share my moments as such. Yeah, man. I'm that. searching for love. Oh, and boy. one day, I will get some... Oh, stop doing that with your arm, mate! So there we go, that's Sam, and the show obviously follows him on as he gets a date. Uh, there's a dating service, obviously, that's part of this show and that they use quite regularly throughout the other series and episodes as well. Let's have a quick look at the other two as well. Why? So let's meet Ian. In Southend, 38-year-old Ian is in a hurry to meet someone who can share his adventures. Just got a quick South End joke for you, okay? South End. Oh, I've just forgotten it. <laughs> Jesus, this always happens. Oh, um, right, yeah. What, what's the similarity between South End and Las Vegas? In both cities, you can buy sex for chips. Chips as in casino chips, and in South End, chips as in do you want a Savaloy sausage with your chips and salt and vinegar. Personally, I never have a Savaloy sausage. I'm more of a scampy man myself, but there we go. Find someone to fall in love with, So this guy, uh, do you remember a couple of years ago on The Undateables, there was this dude, kind of struck me as completely normal. Uh, and I thought, yeah, this guy's totally normal. There's nothing really wrong with him. Had a little bit of a lisp, but there's nothing wrong with that. And he sat down, they sort of built it up. He got this date and I was like, what is wrong with this guy? Why does he need this date? Uh, he said to this girl at this date, I want to measure across your shoulders. They need to be 18 inches across. And I'm like, ah, oh, now I've got it. So you're thinking that Ian's like, you know, that he's totally, when it comes to personality and mentally, uh, totally fine. Yeah, can you come this side, please? Yeah, yeah. Ian has Usher syndrome, a degenerative... See, then, when I thought, when I saw him sort of moving the girl to one side, I was like, he's either got like an OCD or something like that. Then they said he's got Usher syndrome, which between me and my wife in front of the fire, stroking the cat, uh, I was like, Usher syndrome, he's always singing or he's, uh, he's uh, always turning up to weddings, uh, but actually it's something a lot more serious. ...of eye condition that means he's gradually been losing his sight since birth. Poor dude. <laughs> <laughs> right. He only has 8% of his vision left. That's all. In layman terms, it's called tunnel vision, so I have a very small window of sight, and everything else is all black. And this dude is a photographer, and I tell you what, it, well, from, from the photos you see on this little LCD screen, He's absolutely class. I'm just basically going through life looking through this little hole. It's a whole concept to wrap your head around, really, like finding out that you're gonna one day be blind. Tell you what, isn't that harsh? It's last night, I think me and Emily, my wife, oh, I was like proper poor guy, you know? Poor guy. And he lives in South End. <laughs> Until now, he's hidden his condition from everyone other than close friends. Why didn't you ask her out here? Well, to um, I don't know what the response would be. I oh, have no idea. Look no, at her, no beautiful. Sorry. <laughs> poor guy. Oh. Poor, poor bloke. So as you can see, Ian's story is. I mean, well, it's upsets me, <laughs> let's put it that way. So there's Ian's story. Uh, guys, just get over there and watch The Undateables. It's really, really good. You're not going to be let down if you're already a fan. And if you haven't watched it already, don't think that it's voyeur stuff, all right? You're not just watching a load of people struggle and laugh at them. You are watching people... I mean, there's a lot of success in this programme. People don't just end up with nothing. There's a lot of success. Let's meet the last person we saw in the first episode of The Undateables. I think her name's Kate, and she's going, Nycolepsy. But before I do that, I've got to watch an advert to tell me to join the Royal Air Force. Why? Join the Royal Air Force and play jazz drums. Oh, you thought it was covered in mud, but it's not covered in mud. You thought there were steel beams over it, but there were no steel beams over it. That's flexi. It's loss of muscle control due to emotion. Um, I'm mine is laughter. So if I laugh lots, I'll collapse. Unless someone's there to catch me. It can happen any place, oh, man. any time. Kate is a good looking young woman. So. Textile student Kate has narcolepsy. Now I do have one question for you, Kate. Just a quick one. What are you going to do with your textile degree, eh? Oh yeah, what have you got a degree in? I've got a degree in textiles. All right, okay, um, cool. 
I've fallen asleep in several different places, so on the steps, desks at school as well. <laughs> I've all fallen asleep there, Kate. To keep her condition under control, Kate takes up to five naps a day. Approximately 75%, like Kate, also have cataplexy. Cataplexy is loss of muscle control due to emotion, minus laughter. So if I laugh lots, I'll collapse. Ah, uh, he's told her a good joke, isn't he? An attacks can last from a few seconds to several minutes. <laughs> oh, that's so harsh. <laughs> That must be pretty difficult to deal with. I mean, let's face it. What, we fall asleep every time someone... Well, obviously, narcolepsy is something I've heard of before, but I didn't know about the other one, cataplexy or whatever. Cataplexy? I don't know. So if someone tells you a joke, you also pass out because you're laughing or a heightened state of emotion. So there you go. There's the first episode of this year's Undateable series, 2017. We've met Sam, who's got Asperger's, is a rapper, also has bendy arms and also is pretty much full of one-liners for women. We've met Kate who falls asleep quite a lot and also we've met Ian. Pop over to Channel 4 or 4OD or you're probably going to be able to get it on Catch Up. The Undateables is a great show because not only does it try to take, oh, I just don't know how to say it without sounding bad, but The Undateables strikes a really good balance between addressing the problems that we have in society when it comes to people who've got mental health problems or some sort of disability, uh, whilst also showing that there is light at the end of the tunnel, but also that they can fall in love and that they will find love if they just look hard enough. And that all these people, regardless of what you or I or anyone else thinks is wrong with them, and even them themselves, they've got personalities that people will fall in love with. And that's a great thing that The Undateables really tries to bridge and sort out and do. So I hope you don't think I was a bit too harsh on the people that we've just appeared on now. I do love to have a bit of a laugh at television sometimes, but at the same time, I'm the first one to get a lump in the throat. Just, if you ever, ever, ever want to see me cry, all right, if you watch the first 20 minutes of the film up, I will be in pieces, all right? So guys, thanks very much for joining us while we watched a little bit of The Undateables there. I hope it gives you a better idea about what the show's all about, about how much I love it, and also about what an emotional wreck I can be, whilst also being a bit tongue-in-cheek as well. Um, please subscribe and comment on this video. Let us know what we could do better. I really want to make this channel like as best as I possibly can, and I'm only ever going to be able to do that with your suggestions. If you've got a show that you want us to look at and review, put it in the comments section below as well. And just have a great time, all right? See you in our next video. It won't be long. I'm going to do one. I'm going to try and do one every few days for a little while or every week. Just depends on work, stuff like that. I mean, let's face it. We've all got to go out there and earn our pittance, haven't we? So please do click on the subscribe in the cards that are appearing right now in one of the corners. Do that and I'm sure you'll be fine. Please come back. Please comment and I'll see you later. Anyway, I've got to go now because my Pornhub subscription is running out at the end of today. See you soon. Ah, where's the tissues? <laughs>